Hey everybody, it is me, Dan Phelps. I'm coming to you on a very dreary, dreary day here in the Pacific Northwest. But that's okay because I'm like a little ray of sunshine and I'm here to talk to you about how I set up my USB foot controller to control the functions of the Looper in Ableton Live. Let's dive in. I'm using this Looptimus pedal. It's got six momentary foot switches that can be dedicated to any function that you want and three other ones that have other functions that we'll get into in a minute but basically any USB powered or MIDI foot switch if you're using MIDI to connect to Ableton can be easily mapped to control really any function in Ableton but specifically any function of the looper in order to map things in Ableton all you do is come over here to your computer hit command M and that puts you in the MIDI map mode where basically you can click on anything and if you have uh, a device such as the USB foot controller or a keyboard hooked up you simply hit one of the buttons and it'll map that button to that particular function in Ableton. I really like the looper in Ableton. It features almost all of the functions that I like in a looper those functions that I prefer are really influenced by using the Gibson Digital Echoplex for a long time and also the ubiquitous green Line 6 delay pedal that was on everybody's pedal board in the early 2000s. Uh, I find it super useful and it's really fun for me for my improvisation and performance and production stuff. So if we look at the pedal, I have the functions mapped out thusly, starting in the bottom left hand corner we have record which has a couple of different states depending on what's going on with the looper the first time I click record it puts the looper into record the second time I click record it sets the end point for the looper and the looper immediately goes into overdub mode so I can capture something quickly and then immediately start adding to it if I click record again, it goes into playback mode. Now I can play things over top of what's in the looper and it won't just keep stacking and adding that on top. Next to the record button is the clear switch, which as you will see momentarily, dumps everything out of the looper. So a quick example of how that works. <laughs> Next to the record and clear buttons is the reverse function. This basically changes the playback direction of whatever is stored in the looper, or as a fun trick, you can activate it before you've captured anything into the looper, and it, whatever you record will immediately play back backwards. Above the reverse switch is a tap tempo button that basically sets the global tempo for the entire Ableton session. I like to occasionally do things that are rhythmic and I have multiple effects and plugins in Ableton that are locked to the tempo of the session. So that lets me change the tempo on all those things simultaneously. Next to the tap tempo button are the up and down functions. Basically these double or have the speed of the looper and you can similarly to the reverse switch preset this so that something that you record gets played back 
twice as fast or twice as slow. So on and so forth. Another fun thing that I like to do with these functions, with the double and half speed functions, uh, is something that I've grabbed from multiple amazing people in the looping world. Think of Nels Klein, David Torn, Henry Kaiser, Bill Frizzell, which is basically you can change the speed of the looper while recording new information into it so that that new information then plays back relative to the speed that it was recorded in at. It's kind of complicated sounding, but uh, if I show you, it'll make sense. What I'm going to do is create a blank loop. Now we're in overdub mode, and while playing various things on the guitar, I'm going to change the playback speed, and you'll hear how what I played starts to jump around in pitch and speed. cool way of creating weird glitchy sounds and just moving out of the range of the guitar itself so you can record things that are a lot higher and a lot lower. I'll use this if I've recorded a passage and I want to add some sub bass kind of notes to it. I can put the looper in double speed mode, play the low notes, and then when I put it back to normal speed, those notes will be half as fast and twice as deep. Uh, that would sound something like this. So that's a lot of fun. There's a lot of juice to be squeezed out of those particular grapes. Like Jack Welch. On the next page I have a couple of functions that I don't use nearly as much but I do want to be available while I'm improvising and playing. Those are the ability to either double the length of the loop, multiply the length of the loop, or divide the length of the loop, or have it if you will. Um, I'll give you an example. This is what I would do if I wanted to record a short phrase and then multiply that phrase and play longer things over top. It'd be something like this. Of that. So that's the whole list of functions that I have mapped to my controller. Uh, it's pretty powerful, especially when you're using them in conjunction with one another. And uh, maybe I can just show you a quick example of what a performance would look like. Additionally, one other thing is that I have the dry output level of the looper controlled by an expression pedal. You can see I'm moving it up and down 
and it's moving up and down in Ableton Live. The reason that I do this is sometimes I like to have no dry signal from the looper and only be hearing what's going to the effects sends that I have set up so I can play something and then send it into like a big washy reverb and completely transform it. Uh, so in this performance I'll try to play a little something where you don't hear the dry sound of the looper and partway through I'll bring the dry sound up and you can hear how it gives you all of these uh, performative possibilities for creating transitions. So let's uh, let's give something a whirl, shall we? Well, there you go. That was something, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to map the functions of the Ableton Live Looper to a foot pedal. Uh, it's been a magnificent tool for me in my music creating, and hopefully you're able to apply some of these same concepts in yours. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below 
or email me at hello at danphelps.com. Uh, danphelps.com is my website. You can find information about me there. You can find various other free resources and courses and private lessons that I offer there. And I'm on all of the social medias. Come find me. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you soon.